have averted that major uh, disaster. That surprising announcement triggered an applause and even shock as well as water officials revealed that running water will continue without interruption in Prince George's County which is what we've been fearing that would not happen for the last couple of days or so now. Now tonight we're getting a better idea of how in the span of just a few hours the system went from being at critical risk to being able to sustain the replacement of a major water main. Now the Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission just wrapped up a news conference. We want to acknowledge that uh, it's time now for all the businesses to go back uh, to business as usual uh, with keeping in mind that we are still in a conservation uh, mode and, and water restrictions remain in effect until we can complete the repair on the 54 inch uh, water transmission main. So as he just said, the crisis is averted, but water restrictions do remain in place for more than 100,000 people tonight. Steve Chenevie was at the damaged water main when the news broke today and he begins our coverage. Steve. Yeah, quite the surprise for WSOC workers here as well. Let me give you a little bit of perspective as to what we're talking about. Right across the street, about 100 yards behind me, is where that failed section of pipe is. As a matter of fact, we can take that shot from the chopper right now and give you a better idea as to where the workers are. Now, about a half mile from that spot, there's a valve that wasn't working. So they shut down a much larger section of the line that they had hoped, about a three-mile stretch. When they got that valve working today, they've been working on it since Saturday, they were able to just shut off the water here to the immediate area and reroute the water flow so no customers will be left high and dry. I can imagine how this was going to work out. Donna O'Neill is one of many Southern Prince George's County residents breathing a sigh of relief after preparing to be without water for several days. Jugs of water in the house just in case it did go off and then at work they were preparing to where uh, they brought in porta potties in case uh, members had to use the restroom. The change of plans came as a surprise to WSOC workers as well who were suddenly able to open a frozen valve leading to the damaged 54 inch pipe quickly changing the situation that was expected to leave 150,000 people without water during this heat wave. Now that we have that valve operational we were able to shut down a shorter section of the main and bring a 36 inch main into the equation. So we're now moving water through this 36 inch main, which we were not able to do prior to being able to close that valve. That workaround will keep the water flowing as long as residents and businesses continue mandatory water restrictions. While some businesses like this hotel will still lose money because guests checked out and booked elsewhere, many residents like Angela McCall couldn't be happier with today's developments as they will no longer have to worry about saving every precious drop. And not be as nervous and worried is a, is a big, huge relief. And it's 90, almost 100 degree weather. We don't need like not to have any water. <laughs> Yeah, you can sense that relief from the residents to the WSSC workers. As far as the job at hand here, they're still working to get that broken piece of pipe out. It's going to take a few more hours. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, we're going to take a closer look at the high-tech way that workers were able to detect that that pipe was about to burst before it actually did. That's at 6. Live in Forestville, Steve Shanavy, ABC 7 News. All right, Steve, thank you very much.